Welcome to everyone. I'm very happy to have you here today. And I thank you, of course, for coming all the way to Le Loc. I know for some of you, sometimes it's far away. It's a bit uh, exotic to go all the way here. Uh, but I know also that you have not been traveling a lot. So I, we offer you kind of a trip here to come and join us today. But thank you very much uh, for being here. I'll start with the questions. Are dreams meant to remain dreams? At Zenit, it's very clear. And we have been really looking at all aspects of the brand to give you the answer that it's clearly no. At Zenit, dreams are here to be achieved, to be reached. It was certainly not just a dream when in 1900, Zenit and Georges Fab Jaco personally went to Paris to receive the prize from the Universal Exhibition for chronometry, of course, expertise of Zenit. It was certainly not a dream when Louis Blériot crossed the channel with his flight. And uh, he did, I think, 134 attempts before he succeeded. It was obviously not only a dream when our watchmakers in the 60s, they created the El Primero, the famous movement that you all know. And you may know also that when we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the El Primero, I was lucky because I got to meet eight people who made the El Primero next to Charles Vermeau. So they shared so many stories. And they also told me that they almost gave up a few times. But they continue for their dream. They continue to go and did what they did, which is to launch the very first uh, fully integrated automatic high-frequency chronograph in 1969. It was not a dream also when Charles Vermeau, a few years after, and most of you, you know very well the story of, about Charles Vermeau, when he started to hide all elements linked to the movement, here, in Le Loc, in the attic. And he basically probably didn't realize the extent of his act at that time. But what we can say today is that not only he preserved and saved the El Primero, but he also saved the brand. What he wanted to do for sure is to save uh, the El Primero, the mechanical knowledge that Zenit had accumulated at that time. And he really went again for his dream when he did it. It was obviously and certainly not a dream when Mr. Felix Baumgartner, you all remember that, in 2012, when he did something which is quite unnatural for human being, he jumped from the stratosphere. Totally crazy. But again, it was a dream that he had for a while, and he really wanted to do it, so he went for that. And he had a zenith on his wrist, uh, as well as Mr. Blériot when he flew the channel. So he was, he was part of the brand. More recently, when we presented in 2017 the chronograph uh, DeFi 21, which became and still is today the fastest and the most precise chronograph in the industry, measuring the 100 of a second. It was not a dream. We did it. We achieved it. Right after this technical achievement, of course, we came with what is still a, a big innovation. And because at Zenit, dreams are goals. It's part of our history, it's part of our DNA. People are here to achieve. You could see a lot of examples of these people. Quite amazing ones, I have to say. But this is coming from the very beginning. Our founder, Mr. Georges Favjaco, when he was 19 years old, he first talked about putting all craft under the same roof and create what was, at that time, the very first integrated watch manufacturer. And at the age of 22, he opened up here in Le Loc, actually, in the building right behind there, the very first uh, facility where Zenit started uh, its, its rich history. So he was also the founder of this very strong uh, brand philosophy. Our dreams made to remain dreams. The life of Georges Favre Jacot is proof that they really don't. Making watches had always been his life purpose, but he knew, without a shade of a doubt, that he could make more than a job out of it. As it was true that every fiber of his body knew how to assemble a functional watch, he had the strongest belief deep down in his brilliant mind that functional wasn't enough. Perfect was a reachable goal. At age 22, he felt the urge to act on this intuition. The time had come. It was his moment. He was certain of it. Not only was he going to change his life, 
he was also about to change the watchmaking traditions. With this great sense of entrepreneurship and an even greater imagination, he started to build up a whole new concept, a bold one for the time, an obvious one for him. Like a vision, he knew that the creation of the perfect watch needed the perfect timing. His fantasy? Gathering together the best craftsmen of the country under the same roof and have them work as one on interchangeable components. It was 1865. It was the birth of the first manufacturer. An idea that would allow him to fulfill his dream of assembling high-quality watches in quantities never produced before. An idea that would also help the dream of others, as the creation of the manufacturer also meant job security for all his employees. Precision, performance, virtuosity. The trio he had always dreamt of was now alive and ticking before his eyes. The perfect watch wasn't a dream anymore. Even better, it could now be perfected every day in the hands of the men and the women devoted to the visionary who had put a roof over their heads, devoted to the company offering them care and stability. GFJ and Company, a name that wouldn't actually last for long. As one day, a creative meeting would end with the conception of what Georges Favre Jaco believed to be his most special caliber. An outstanding work of art that he would name after a phenomenon he'd seen in the sky on the very same day. The Zenith. As this caliber would become his most famous work, the company would soon bear the same name. Are dreams made to remain dreams? For Georges Favre Jaco, the answer had always been no. Of course, when we also, I would say, investigated in the brand history, when we look at all aspects, we also looked at the different ad campaign. And I did it looking at the archives with, uh, with, uh, with Laurence and, uh, and other people of our staff. We went to look for also testimonial of this spirit. And we, we saw a lot of different ads. And these three, I think, are very meaningful. 1914 in German, the ideal pocket watch, which is also referring of this Grand Prix which was a very big achievement at that time for a small Swiss company going to win the prize in Paris. Uh, later in the 70s, of course, with all the technical aspect that we see on, the, on the, this description, but Zenith remains in the lead. So Zenith has to go for it. Again, same spirit. And more recently, we talked about Felix Baumgartner. We had this great visual uh, showing again this amazing achievement he did jumping in the stratosphere, but also mentioning uh, a link to the star with the follow your own star. You may remember this, this concept. So the star, very important symbolic in the brand, the name Zenith, the star, and the philosophy of brand. At Zenith, we always focus on the future. And you know, this is also something super, super important. Uh, again, when I met this gentleman that made DL Primero, you know, in their 80s, you could expect them to say, the past was better, now what you do. They didn't tell me this. They told me one thing. They said, Julian, when we made DL Primero, we were super innovative. We had a startup mindset, and we built the future. Because innovation those days became what we call icon now. So basically, our responsibility, and they told me that, is to continue, of course, to tribute the past, but to build the future. So what comes next? Today is very important for us, because we are, it's a new chapter for the brand. And we want to share this brand philosophy, this brand spirit, this brand mindset, and we have time to reach your star. Because this is what came out of this exercise that we've been working. This is what came out the most strongly about the DNA of the brand. And this is a philosophy of brand. We call it a brand philosophy that will be everywhere, that all employees are sharing, that our clients are going for when they acquire a Zenit watch. And of course, we worked on different aspects. We had to do a lot of work on, on our boutique concept, which also declined in corner, in display, etc., for the visual environment of the brand, because the brand has to be in line with this. So we basically recreated uh, what we call the starry sky, which is so important in our, in our philosophy of brand. You can see it on the top. We created different environment by product line. And of course, storytelling is very important. So we include also what we call a storytelling bar. It's a place you can see on the right where you can sit, you can have a drink, and we talk about the brand. We, of course, because you know better than anyone that we are in a digital world, so we worked on our website. We worked on our website to have a very interactive website, a website where you learn things. 
In the past, we tend to show beautiful watches. Now we are telling stories, we are explaining this philosophy of brand, we are explaining who we are. And of course, we went beyond because we launched um, a couple of months ago our e-commerce uh, function on these websites, on this website, which basically enable people to buy online. Alors, you'll tell me we don't reinvent it, it's been existing, but I was the first one to ask the team to develop it in a very short time during the confinement and to speed up what was planned to be done later. And we're happy because the watch I'm wearing is the, the manufacturer edition with this dial that we found here was basically the first watch we, we sold online, and it's been, a, it's been a great start for us. So this is also a way to see that uh, we are contemporary and that we move forward uh, the right way. Time to reach your star is about people. Uh, like, oh, like many brands, we have brand ambassadors. You call them ambassadors, friend of the brands, people that are face for the brand. We are not interested in having people that are just uh, getting on stage like this and taking a picture with the, with the watch. We want to work with people that are totally embracing this philosophy of life. So we've been uh, working with a few people. Uh, one of them recently joined us. Uh, his name is Patrick Muratoglu. You may know him. He became the best, uh, I would say, tennis coach or mentor in the world. Uh, he's been coaching Serena Williams. He explained how he, he, she was blocking at 12 and he took her to 23 uh, Grand Slam titles. Uh, he also an entrepreneur because he's running different businesses. He also developed uh, tennis academies all over the world in an amazing way. And he's taking clearly the lead in this today. So he's a guy who, when he tells you his story, he started from nothing and he had a dream. He wanted to work in tennis. Uh, on top of that, he's also someone who is basically helping people to reach their stars. Alors, superstars like, uh, super famous like Serena Williams, but also young kids every day. He's helping them to go for their achievement, to go for their star. So Patrick was supposed to be here today, and I regret he couldn't make it because he's, he would have shared with you a bit about this philosophy that he uh, implemented so well, and that when we met the first time, we discussed and we said, Jesus, it's exactly the same. We're talking about exactly the same mindset like the people we, we saw before. So he couldn't be here today. He's in New York for the US Open, of course. Um, but he uh, sends us a quick message. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi to the entire Zenit team and hi to Julien, my friend. Uh, I would love to be with you today because I know it's an important day, but uh, I have to be at the US Open where I'm taking care of my players. Uh, and my goal is to help them reach their stars, which is, I know, uh, words that sound familiar to you. And that's the reason why we have this, uh, this bond between Zenit and myself, because we share the same philosophy, which is to help and encourage people to reach their own star. During the, the confinement, uh, and I want to speak about that because I think it's, a, it's an important topic, especially uh, those days, uh, I told my team that they will be, uh, the companies will be in three different situations. They will be either broke, uh, they will bankrupt, or they will be stronger than before the confinement. The only way to reach that was to, to just look at the, the glass half full rather than half empty. In every crisis, every, every difficult situation, there, is, there are always opportunities that, that arise and we have to be able to see them and for that, we need to be creative and positive. And that's where uh, we, someone from the team came with the idea to create UTS, which was and has become now um, a tennis league that is extremely modern and I hope the future of our game. I wish you the best and I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye. Next to Patrick, of course, there are a few other people. Some of them you may have heard or seen. Uh, Ethan Chen. He's a singer uh, which is basically pleasing all generations. He's crossing generations. And again, he started from his dream because he told me I really wanted to be a singer and I was not a very good singer. And when I went to singing class, I was told that uh, I was not sure I would be a good singer. So, you know, it gives hope to all of us for our star to reach. But he went for it. He worked very hard. And he managed to become a really, really unbelievable singer. And when he says, when he tells about his story, Again, it's, it's a great example, great, great, great example of, of life uh, philosophy. 
Uh, Carl Cox, you may know better if you like music, if you like electro music. He was a legend already in the 80s, in the 90s, and still today is still super successful, again, crossing generations. For him, it was a bit wider than DJ. He said, I want to become, to work in music. He didn't know if he would be musician, singer, producer, or DJ that he became. Last but not least, uh, and I was not lucky enough to meet with her, we had some video calls, of course, because it was during the confinement. Uh, this lady on the right called Airi Atakayema is also, uh, she's from Japan, and she became a, a very important face in, in Japan because she was not only uh, pa a part of the gymnastic team at the Olympics, and she became a very, very well uh, recognized sports person in Japan. But uh, when she reached her star in sports, she basically said, I had another one. I wanted to uh, become a TV person. I wanted to become a TV presenter. And she also went for her star, and she's now a very famous person in, in Japan, and very emblematic uh, person in Japan. We make watches, so I cannot only talk about people, of course. When we produce watches, we also need to push the boundaries. And believe me, we have unbelievable projects to come. Uh, some of them you'll see uh, later, uh, when, we, when we see each other later to see product. But, uh, I mean, in the last few years, of course, uh, you, I re mentioned it, but DeFi 21 was a great uh, way to push the limits. We are known for chronometry. We are known for the hundred of a second, for the one tenth of a second. Now, a hundred of a second, and it will go further. So, we have more things to come. Inventor, I mentioned it earlier, obviously a very big uh, innovation, kind of a concept watch that we are, uh, uh, that is part of this philosophy of continuing to bring in uh, new things. More recently in Dubai, we launched the DeFi Midnight, which is for us uh, an innovation in terms of spirit. Why? Because we integrated the starry sky. So in a way, this time to reach your star philosophy is on the dial. So you look at the dial and you dream about what you want to do. But we also wanted to launch what I call the very contemporary piece. Why? Because we included this interchangeable strap system. You will tell me interchangeability has been done already, nothing really new. Yes, but delivering it the way we do it with this watch is quite uh, innovative because we push people to use interchangeability. We deliver three straps next to the bracelet. So you basically have four watches in one. To go with this launch, we created a concept called Dream Hers. Dream Hers is linked to the time to reach your star philosophy. But it's about tribute to women. Women who have achieved great things in their respective fields. Again, it could be business, could be sport, could be art, could be many different things. And here we're not talking about big celebrities. We're not talking about big names. We're talking about people that are known, but people that are like you and me, they have achieved things and they want to share their experience. They want to share what they've done again. So this is a very, uh, very important concept. And of course, normally we should have started already a couple of months ago to have these women coming on stage because we're going to have people in all over the country, all over the world, in, in different countries, people coming on stage and making talks. We will do it in a digital way for now, of course, with interviews, with live, with things, but people sharing really uh, about their, their life experience. So have a look at a few first. This is also a very, very new concept. Few women that are um, uh, part of this Dreamers concept. Time to reach your star, yes, people, yes, product, but it's also about experiences. We are in the luxury business, you know that. We are selling emotion, passion, so we need to provide experiences and new things. And again, here, uh, we don't only stick to what we have, we try to build new things and to, brought, to bring new things to the Zenit environment. One of them, you know, it's been two years ago, but it's important to recall that we were the very first brand to open up the door of its manufacturer for public visits. But we are in Le Locle, and you know that because you came all the way to visit us here. 
so it's far away, we cannot welcome everyone. So we needed also to bring a digital dimension to that. So we created what we call a virtual visit uh, of the manufacturer, where we give a very close experience to what you would experience here physically. Uh, but of course, uh, on your computer, on your cell phone, on your iPad, you can really uh, get very close to the experience. And it's also for us a way to export and to bring the manufacturer to people and not only people coming to us. Bamford, you all know George Bamford, and you may remember that we were also the first company to officialize a partnership because for us, customization is clearly in the air. We might not like people customizing watches, but I believe that George is someone very talented who basically uh, uh, does it very well, and also, more important than George, our clients. Our clients, they want customization. They want special watches. So we've been working very successfully with him over the last couple of years, and we have a new project to come uh, soon that will bring customization to a new level. It will be available in our boutiques, uh, and I will talk to you at another uh, occasion, but this is uh, really how we do evolve this customization uh, concept. Again, to give our clients a special and unique experience. You recognize Aurel Bax on the right. Uh, last year, as you know, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the El Primero all over the world with 19 major events, with plenty of other smaller events. We talked about the brand, we talked about the El Primero, etc., etc., and we finished with a highlight with the event we had at La Reserve uh, with Aurel during the auction. And why I'm telling you this? Because, again, Zenit was the first brand to start a collaboration and to develop a product in collaboration with an auction house. And it was a great collaboration. When Aurel came here with uh, Alexandre Godby, uh, they visited, of course, the manufacturer. We showed them the archives. We showed them prototype, dials, different things we had. And, and many ideas came out of that. And, and one thing that was sure for Aurel is that the treasure is not only the hidden treasure of Vermeaux, but, of Vermeaux, but there is much more to explore in terms of treasure at Zenit. And that's how we launched the limited edition together in collaboration. And of course, the unique piece with the lapis lazuli uh, dial in platinum that was sold uh, for a record breaking of uh, 250,000 uh, Swiss francs. After that, of course, we continued to exchange with Aurel. And um, he told me, and he basically told the press also, uh, I think it was Rob Report. He, if you haven't read it, uh, read the article uh, and the interview in Rob Report, where he mentioned clearly Zenit as the next or one of the very few next brands that will be. Uh, super important in the auction business. And we know because we've seen collectors coming to us. We've seen um, uh, the results at the auction. Even recently in June, we had two pieces that were sold uh, far uh, beyond the expected prices. So we can feel there is something, there is a spirit, there is something special about that brand that we need to, to work on. So thanks to all this discussion, uh, we have decided to launch also something very new to us. It's going to be called the Zenit Icons collection, Zenit Icons, very important, where basically we will focus on 12, 15 key references of the brand. You know them, A386, A384, A385, but all these very iconic timepieces. And we will do a few things. First of all, uh, we have created a full uh, restoration service here with the two master watchmakers. This will be part of the manufacturer visit, by the way. So when you'll come in, the, in a few weeks or months, you will be able to visit the restoration uh, facility. And not only we will respond positively to anyone wanting to restore its watch since day one, since 1865. This is a commitment of the brand. We will repair every single watch since the beginning. But we will also restore watches that will be certified, authenticated guaranteed for two years, coming out of the manufacturer, so really seriously guaranteed by the manufacturer, available for sale in our internal boutique, in, uh, on e-commerce, obviously, which is kind of a, another boutique, but virtual, and of course, most important, here at the manufacturer. People come here, they have the emotion, of course, they, they look at the new watches, but they want to see these iconic watches, and some of them will be available for sale. So this is something very important because we had requests. We know clients are expecting that. We heard also a lot of people that are uh, today complaining about buying on the secondary market and getting many problems. And 
paying a, a lot of money for getting a lot of problems. So we believe this is really a commitment to the brands, to this collector community that we are uh, about to launch uh, actually in October in our Ginza boutique, which just opened with the new concept. Uh, and I'm very happy to, to announce it today because it's a big, um, big move for a brand like Zenit. So Zenit mission, what is it? Zenit exists to basically inspire individuals to pursue their dream again, but not only to dream, you know? We all dream to be the best uh, football player in the world, to be the best violinist in the world. This is a dream, you know? We talk about people like you and me. We talk about people that we have dreams, our dreams. Fine, they might not be the best ones for other people, but they are our dreams and we want to reach them. So it's normal people. Of course, we would not be complete if we didn't bring a new advertising campaign. So I'm, I'm happy to show you also three visuals, three new visuals that are basically showing you the spirit of that. Alors, time to reach your star. You have it in the middle. It's clear. It's here. But what do you have? You have a young guy on the left uh, who is basically in a very urban environment. He's looking because he wants to go there. He has a job. He may have a very important contract to sign. He may have a, a business uh, deal to close. I mean, he's next to the city. He's urban. He wants to uh, realize, and you can guess the star behind the building. You have then a woman in the middle. She's on stage. Uh, it seems like she has a big uh, audience uh, looking at her. Uh, the spots uh, look like stars, of course, and she's about to perform. We don't know what. She might sing, she might act, she might uh, make a TED talk or uh, any presentation, but she will do something. She's about to start, and she's also going to go for, for what she wants to achieve. Uh, and on the right side, you have, um, you have a mountain. Yeah, we are in Switzerland, so we, a bit of sport, a bit of action, and uh, this gentleman is here. He's, he's starting to climb. Uh, the mountain is also the symbolic uh, of the, the highest level. Uh, Zenith is the highest point in the sky. You can see also a star uh, behind the mountain. Uh, Zenith means actually a summit. So it's, it's very linked to that kind of, uh, of, of, uh, of spirit as well. Uh, I show you this, which puts in reality a bit uh, how the ad will be uh, laid out with the, the Def DeFi Midnight as well as the DeFi um, 21. So this is actually being launched uh, right now. So time to reach your star, and this is also important, uh, is, about, uh, is about people, we said, but it's about human achievement. And I would say individual achievement. And uh, as I said before, we all have uh, things that we want to accomplish. We all want to embrace this philosophy, of course. But uh, uh, here at Zenit, we, we can do whatever we want. But I mean, there are a lot of people. Huh? We are uh, uh, quite a few in this manufacture, and we have people that I would like uh, to uh, give a bit of tribute today and invite uh, to join me on stage. These are watchmakers. Uh, our watchmakers that are performing uh, all year long and um, we can do what we want, but uh, I don't shake your hands, but uh, thank you for your job because uh, and this is also the reason why I ask you to come to the manufacturer. I know we could have done that in Geneva, we could have done that in Neuchâtel, where we have lunch later, but I wanted you to be here because this is a very important uh, site for us, and I think it's important also to, uh, to share this uh, with uh, not the whole uh, team of watchmakers, but a representation of, uh, of our watchmaking team. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and I would like also, of course, to thank you for your attention. I think super important because you're going to hear about this brand philosophy uh, for a long time. And uh, I'd like uh, to, uh, to thank you for your attention. Thank you also uh, watching us live here. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you continue to follow us uh, on our different social media. And you will see that we have uh, a lot to come for the brand. Thank you very much. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Sir.